Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Win the Hour, Win the Day podcast. And I am your host, Chris Ward, and I am super excited about Jamie Palmer. She is in the house. And now Jamie is going to dive in with us and she's going to talk to us about how to make social media simple and how to really finally have a formula to repurpose your content and really do it in a way that it's not just all this, you know, you can take something and repurpose it, but to really, really finally do one piece of something or item or content and really make it effective for you. Am I correct, Jamie? Is that what you're promising us? That's what we're going to attempt to do today. <laughs> okay. All right. So I, I think I repurpose my content more than most. So we'll take a video and then it gets transcribed and we turn it into posts with some tweaking and stuff. But I think from the little bit of conversation I had with you, I think I'm still missing the boat. I think there's a lot more deep diving I could be doing. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think a lot of the repurposing formulas out there sort of miss the boat in that, like, you really have to slow down and get really intentional, especially if you have someone that can help you, right? Mm -hmm. Most of the entrepreneurs I work with, they have some sort of assistant that helps them, right? Well, if you have an assistant- We're all about teams here. You know that. (laughs) Yeah. We're all about have your what is next team. And, you know, otherwise you're just a sufferpreneur and it's a long, slippery, painful journey. So yes, we do want to have someone to assist you with this for sure. Yeah. So, and and for me, I'm always, I'm always a big fan. If it's just somebody that's like a solo partner, stick on two platforms. However, if you're starting to dive into this repurposing and I like to think of it from macro content. So macro content is content that's going to give you it's got a longer lifespan. It's lifespan might be days, weeks, months, even years, right? Depending upon the platform that you're putting it on. And then you have this micro content and micro content is essentially content that you post on social media that promotes that macro content. And then you've got nano content. So nano content is the content that just lives on the social media platform. Okay. So you're going to give us examples to all of these. Yes. So I'll give you examples, okay. but I just want to set that framework right? Okay, for, got for it. everything that we're talking about. So macro, so, micro, nano. Yep. Macro, micro, nano. All right. So macro content is really amazing because it's got a really long lifespan. And I think far too often people focus on that nano content. So, and a good example of nano content is like a quote card with, you know, a nice long form, meaningful caption. That content is great. However, when you post that on say Instagram, for example, after a day or two, you're probably not going to continue to get likes on it. Right. Okay. So if you then spend more time in say taking your, your podcast and turning it into a blog and SEing the SEOing that on your blog and then repurposing it on medium and repurposing it on LinkedIn articles and repurposing it in all these places where you can leverage the SEO aspect of it, you're going to continue to be able to reap the rewards of that content that you've created. Okay. I'm a little scared. That sounds like that macro. So we're at macro. That sounds like a lot of work. So And I, so if I have this podcast and then I have it transcribed, I turn it into a blog. Now for me, this is probably a a sidestep because everybody else is doing it differently. For me, this podcast is general business. It could be anything. I just want to get people to the next win now, but my major platform is all about creating the win team and efficiency and all that other stuff. So for me, it might not be a great fit unless I somehow tie into look in order to do all this amazing stuff. Jamie says we should be doing, you do need to have win team. You can't do this without it. So I could tie that into it. So then I would take this, this podcast, repurpose it into an article and then repurpose the article into my blog, into medium, into different platforms. Correct. Okay. All right. So it's actually really not, I think once we start thinking a bigger blog, you start to think you're writing, but I'm not writing. I'm just tweaking this transcription, which I have to admit, we used to do that for a while. We were doing it with articles on LinkedIn. We would repurpose the podcast and do it on LinkedIn. And uh, yeah, I don't have a good reason why we stopped that, but anyhow. <laughs> yeah, we, so I just recorded my 400th podcast episode and okay. I do a- She's bl- bragging. That's all. <laughs> She's just bragging. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. The reason why I share that though, is we've gone through periods of testing, like where we only did the short form description 
on my yeah. blog. And then I went through periods where we probably did a hundred episodes where we did the long form, all the SEO, the beautiful article and everything that we've properly SEO'd and everything that we've done as a true blog blog with the podcast embedded at the top of it still reaps me search uh, benefits from WordPress. And it's not really that much extra work in the grand scheme of things. And I consistently get 150 new organic subscribers off of Google every single month because I invested that time up front. And I've already created the, the, the content, right? Number one, yeah. number two, I don't have to do the work of writing the article. My team handles that. And number three, that hour of time, I have, I have podcasts that are three years old that are still bringing subscribers to my list. Okay. So let's break this down. The content for the, so when we repurpose this podcast, then do we do it Q and a magazine style, like just a transcription of it fancy, not summarize it, make it a whole new story. Correct. Okay. So we just, so it's like, here's the intro. And then Chris said, and then Jamie said, and we go back and forth. So we just clean it up just clean it and up. then, okay. And then we have an opt-in and then we're just posting it on our blog and it's the full thing. Now, when we have this full transcription, do we put that in the show notes? Are you still putting that in the show notes on iTunes and other places, or we're just pure talking content social on the socials? I'm just talking pure content on the socials. Okay. Okay. All right. So what you've done is you've taken, so you've taken this, we write it out very simple. We're just cleaning it up. We're not even, we're not even writing an article. So we're not writing an article off. Here's some, the summary of what Jamie said. It's just literally what Jamie said. And then we just repurpose that. Okay. Yeah. We were doing that. I don't know why we fell off the wagon with that. Okay. And, and I just want to add there, Chris, too, like you, you're going to want to like sprinkle in keywords. Mm-hmm. Right. But yeah. it, it's no different than when you're cleaning, really cleaning it up. Yeah. Right. So if right. you're smart about it, when you're recording it, you really don't have to worry about adding keywords later on. Yes. Um, but you want to make sure that you go through and you say, okay, I'm going to make this a heading. I'm going to add this as a subhead. Like when you go to physically post it, you want to make sure that you're doing the thing that Google likes yeah. from a, from a blog perspective. You, which is fine because then you just go back and add it's like cooking out a few spices, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. So we've got that. Now for those, I'm getting all excited. It's all about Chris. But if you didn't have a podcast, then, you know, it could be a video that you're repurposing. It could be anything that you're doing on the socials, correct? Correct. Yeah. So I we've done this for clients and for myself with Facebook Lives. We've done that. Oh with clubhouses <laughs> where they yeah. just record the audio while they're on the clubhouse. They we've done it with YouTube. Um, we've done it with LinkedIn lives. We've done it with just like, Hey, let me just record something on my, my phone, on my audio app. And we're just going to use that as a transcription. Like we don't even publish the audio anywhere. We just use the audio as the basis for the article. Okay. Oh, okay. So if I did it, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh. And here I think I'm like, I think I got this, but I don't. <laughs> so, okay. So if we do the lives, then we just, tra we just totally transcribe it again. And we're not, tra I think what happens, I think where so many of us get stuck and say, oh, no, that starts to sound like work is I'm thinking taking the transcription and then turning it into an essay, like a blog, but we can just have a full on transcription. And then just as long as we lay it out, like it's a transcription back to that other previous one, like a magazine article, you speak, I speak, then that's somewhere else that we post on medium and our blog and all those other places. All yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. And the other, the other thing is too, if you're not doing it as an interview, right. Yeah. I use this formula that I call the rule of three. Yeah. Um, and the rule of three basically states that if you're going to do any sort of value driven podcast or Facebook live or whatever piece of content, Essentially, you have three high-level bullet points, and then each one of those bullet points has three sub-bullet points. Yeah. And, and then, therefore, when you go to get it transcribed, there's your article format. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. All right. All righty. All righty. Okay. <laughs> I'm lost in thought. You just talk to the people because I'm over here thinking about <laughs> what I could be doing. Okay. <laughs> so, so, all right. So, that's this is we're still at the macro level, right? Yep. 
Okay. So the macro level, there's all kinds of stuff you can be doing. You can do your podcast, you can do your lives, you can do any video, anything that you've done, turn that into from that. Is that where we get our micro stuff? Yeah. So once you have the macro, like I said, I highly recommend taking that macro and, and putting it wherever you can put that macro, right? It's, it's worth whatever time and effort that takes. You also want to make sure that you are driving traffic to said macro from your social media. And that's a, a step that people often skip. Um, and so from a micro perspective, what, what I highly recommend is that for every piece of macro content, you're going to make two pieces of micro content and okay. micro content is essentially content that gives you a teaser of the information that is shared already inside of that piece of macro content. And then it drives traffic back to that, that piece of macro content, whether that's on your blog or your medium or wherever that is. And you want to drive traffic there. If, if you are at all doing a blog on your own website, always drive the traffic back there first, but it's really important because sometimes we're like, Oh yeah, here, let me like link this podcast. And mm -hmm. then you link the podcast app, <laughs> right. Or yeah. you link the podcast right. and you fail to link the blog. And ultimately that doesn't say to Google, Hey, this content is relevant. Right. So what you're saying is we, out of habit, I would say, okay, this is really great conversation with Jamie and here's a link to iTunes, but I'm driving traffic to iTunes, which is great. I want you guys listening to me, but the reality is people aren't going stopping what they're doing on their computer to go listen to the podcast anyhow. So it's really making you aware I have a podcast, but what I want to do is link it to my blog where the content is. And then there on that, when I have the written out content, do I put a link to the show there? Would yeah. I have the light? Okay. Yep. Yeah. So what I like to do is I put like the little, and I use Libsyn for my podcast. So we use the little embed form. And then underneath we have subscribe buttons for all the different podcast okay. platforms. And then underneath that is the full blown written article and everything okay. that, that I like to promote, because if you're going to create this content, you want to promote it. So at that micro level, we always drive everything back to the blog and then people can sort of self-select. Like you can sit here and you can listen to it on the blog. You can read it or you can listen to it at one of your favorite browsing places. And you would drive traffic from the socials to that. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And sorry, where are we now? Is that a micro? That's micro. So, okay. so and a great example of that is when you share this interview, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to tag mm -hmm. me on social media and I'm going to share it with my people. Right. But my, right. some of my people might be Google people. They might be, uh, iTunes people. They might be Spotify people. So if you drive it back to the blog where they have multiple listening options, mm. it actually makes a better user experience as well. So then we really should never be giving the link directly to iTunes. Oh, all right, everybody. <laughs> That's another moment for Chris, I because mean, you know, you get caught up. I mean, I, 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 I'm a marketing strategist. I still have marketing clients, although everyone sees what we do with it, what I'm so passionate about that you you should, you know, your business should support your life, not consume it. And you stop working so hard. That's my governing thing, how I want to change the world, but you just get caught up in there's so many little teeny little steps that all you, it, I always say it's like getting directions to somewhere and you've all these directions. All you have to do is take one little wrong road and you're off like, woo. Yeah. So you get seduced in the beginning when you're all excited. Look, mom, I have got, I've got a podcast, which by the way, <laughs> sidebar story, my mother will often say things like, and she's very tech savvy, very smart, very with it, very young, all this other stuff. But but like Prince Harry and Meghan Markle now have a podcast. She goes, yeah, they're doing that thing that you're doing. What is that? The podcast. I'm like, okay, see, they're not actually, like, she makes it seem like I, they're trying to catch up with me. Right. I'm like, thanks mom. But I'm not that I'm, I'm not a, ahead of them in any capacity. Like they're not trying to catch up to me, but you do get seduced of, Oh, look, I'm on iTunes. So let's drive the traffic to iTunes because I, like, I'm feeling like a big girl. I'm connected to iTunes, but you're right. That's just bad math. Math. Well, and you can't also see the analytics. No. Yeah. 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 Okay. You can't see awesome. The I always run it through the, the, the lens of, I, I always prefer to keep it in my ecosystem. I mean, in fairness, my whole philosophy is like, let me build my own biz, online business ecosystem. Yeah. But it's like the more that you can keep traffic within your ecosystem, yeah. the easier it is to get people to move forward. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Okay. So then what does nano look like? Nano, so, nano? Yeah. Nano content is essentially all those social media posts that you do. So simply okay. a social media post that's just meant to drive engagement or commenting or getting likes. And I always say for every piece of macro content, you should be able to create four to five pieces of nano content that okay. you, you'd you sprinkle out, you know, one a week over the next three to four weeks. So um, my formula for that is you usually grab one to two quotes. Okay. And with those quotes, you'd put an affirmation or some sort of short form question or just something to drive a little bit of, of, of engagement right there on the social media platform. And then you'd have one to two sort of short form posts, right? Where it's like, here's sort of like a ninja tip or a fast action tip that they can drive. Mm. That's just, it's right there on the platform. They don't have to go anywhere, right? You're meeting them where they are. And then you typically would grab one longer form piece of content that you'd pull as a nano that lives on, on the social media platforms. Yeah. And simple things like, like you said, I mean, we do that with the, certainly the podcast, we'll get a quote from the audience. We do uh, the audience, sorry, the guest, and we do a graphic on it. So, and even that was when somebody told me that idea, I was like, oh, you know, that's so simple. How either they're really smart or I'm really stupid. Why did I not think of that sooner? Right. So sometimes there's just little teeny things that you just, you know, it kind of reminds me, I don't know where you live, but the, there's egg commercials where they'll show you that, oh, you can make eggs for breakfast, eggs for dinner, eggs for lunch. And there is a whole lot of things you can do in an egg, with an egg. And that's really what's happening is you just get lost in the busyness or the, the grind of social media and you forget to be more creative with it. 100%. 100%. Yeah. All right. So tell us some of the other big mistakes you think you, you see all the time where people are missing out. Uh, tagging. Oh my goodness. Mm. I feel like everybody always forgets to tag or they tag in properly. <laughs> okay. Um, simply because I think that they, you know, when you think about tagging on Instagram versus Facebook, right. You want to tag on Instagram in both the image and in the description or the caption, okay. if you will. Okay. Um, because when you tag on the image, it shows up on my profile. Okay. And when you tag in the caption, it makes it easier for me to share it. So I always am a fan of doing both. I also see a lot of times that people will share directly from Instagram to Facebook, and then it doesn't translate well, or it's got all the Instagram hashtags on there. That makes me crazy. Spend the yeah. five minutes and yeah. just post it natively on, on the platform. But I think that's a big one that a lot of people make. And I, and I think it's, it's just these simple little nuanced things on all of these platforms that when you feed them in the right way, they'll, they'll work really well for you. But if you're trying to shortcut it, like Facebook knows that. Yeah. Yeah. We're not, yeah, we're not, we're not going to outsmart them. That is for sure. What do you think about? So I don't, I don't know if I'm a bad human being, Cause I don't really like it when somebody tags me on LinkedIn and it's just a general question. They've tagged like 25 people. It's like, well, what do you think of this? Like, do you think whatever you should work evenings and weekends? And then you get tagged in something. And I, my expectation, if I'm tagged in it, it's like, I was on it. We connect like it's, it's really yeah. is about me. So I, I'm starting to see that a lot on LinkedIn and Instagram. And I don't know. I'm just, I'm not that evolved because I find it. It's like, you're tapping me on the shoulder and saying, Chris, I have a question. And then I look and you're not, I'm in a room with a hundred other people. Yeah. I mean, I have a love hate relationship with LinkedIn. I originally, I started my business when I was 20 and LinkedIn was the primary way I grew my business for a solid decade. And I feel like it has just become a spam fest over there. So I am not a fan of the random tag. Well, they do it on Instagram too. I've seen it on Instagram yeah, where I got I tagged like, yeah. I haven't seen it on Instagram yet, but I, I think it's tacky. Like you shouldn't be yeah. tagging someone unless it's a, you're, you're sharing something of theirs or yes. B, you're actually there. It's relevant to them. Like yeah. you, they're involved in that. Like you shouldn't just randomly tag people unless it's like, Hey, you know, tag a girl boss. Like not that yeah, I'm yeah. a fan of that, but like, yeah, yeah. 
that's yeah. that's how you know one way in which you can use tagging but don't I mean, tag me to get an audience like that's what they're doing yes. they're tagging people so all of a sudden they have an audience and it does yeah. turn me off i just think oh it takes everything i have not to on un, on connect with them i think in the real world you should have that delete on friend on connect button i'm just like i really enjoy it <laughs> i'm just like oh Same. you you were kind of rude at thanksgiving oh here we go we're disconnected <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay so all right so Make sure we're, we're really taking our content, repurposing it, breaking it down to the whole macro, micro, nano, right? Yep. And then I don't even know, like, what? where do you start with, like, I know I produce my content. I have a con on Fridays, I do content. Where do we, how do we keep track of this all? If you say, okay, do we pick podcasts over live or just keep repurposing everything and don't worry about having too much content, really? I don't worry about having too much content. Yeah. I, yeah. I just don't worry about it. And then I also am like a huge fan of like once a week referring back to old content as well. Oh, okay. okay. You know, like that makes sense. In my my social media schedule, like we try to do two posts a day and at least once, if not twice a week, we're referring back to to old content, right? Whether that's okay. an old YouTube or whether that's an old um podcast or whatever that, that might be. And we're just trying to drive traffic to it. Cause ultimately I want to tell Google like, Hey, I'm relevant. Right. That's an important thing that I think we forget because we all are like little dancing monkeys on different social media platforms. And you're like, okay, tap, tap, tap literally. Cause literally dancing monkeys. Cause I'm telling you, I'm not dancing on TikTok. I don't care what happens to the world. Right. And I'm, just, I'm just, and I'm not doing that when you guys, you can turn in on YouTube to see me bounce around, but I'm not doing that bouncing around and pointing shockingly at the sky where there's a caption and then point down. I, it's been done. All right. So I'm not signing up to be the 1000 person to have done that. So you become Become this dancing monkey and then you forget this isn't really just about getting likes and connections this is really about educating google on who you are where you are and what you're good for really ultimately everything you do on social media think of it like an each each individual social media platform is its own ecosystem and i am yeah. a huge fan i'd rather have people own and really do two social yeah. media platforms really well than be on three or four or five and ultimately when you think about like how can i leverage this. The whole point of social media is simply to get people to go back to your website, right? Yeah. Like it's, it has nothing to do with a like or a comment there. And it often gets lost along yeah. the way. Like the social media doesn't matter if you have an engaged following and you get, you know, 20 or 30% of your people who are actually clicking through to your website and signing up for your email, where that's something that you, you own or you lease, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's way better than having 20,000 followers who just like your video or whatever yeah. it is, you know? hundred percent. Oh my gosh. Okay. Jamie, we've got a couple of minutes left. What's the last thing we need to know um, from you and where, not the last thing, <laughs> what's one of the other things and where can people find your more of your brilliance? Yeah. So um, I would say consistency. <laughs> that, mm, I, yeah, I think that yeah. would, that's what I would leave you guys with. Consistency is important. Don't try to do it every day if that doesn't feel in alignment to you, but, but just try to show up consistently, whether that's three times a week or seven times a week or whatever that is, just be consistent. And then you can find me on social media, Jamie Palmer. <laughs> yeah. And that consistency really is something because I know once you get that down pat, then you can take a deeper dive. Cause then it isn't your like, you know, crawling out of a pile of paperwork thing. Oh, I got to do this today on Facebook. So if you get the consistency down pat, okay, that's done. We've got a routine. Boom. What, how can we do this more effectively next week? So I think you're abs of course you're right. I, I love when people are on my show and they're very wise and I say, yeah, yeah, you're right. Like they came here for me to tell them they're right. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean it with affection, not, you know, oh yes, you've been <laughs> ordained here. <laughs> All right, Jamie, you've been spectacular. Thank you so very much. These are very valuable tips and uh, we appreciate you and everyone else. We'll see you on the next episode.